you can think, hey, can you hear can you hear me blush through the through the speakers? <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Widowed AF. You're here with Rosie Gilmoss and joining me is my husband, Jonathan. Welcome, John. Hi, everybody. Hi, Rose. I probably need to stop introducing and welcoming you now because you're becoming quite the permanent fixture and I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, everyone else does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I think you'll find that, that they do, and they do. Um, although I have actually messaged the inimitable Lucinda this morning and trying to see if we can get her in because um, I'm going completely off the topic I was planning to start this episode on, but, you know, such is this podcast. Um, we're actually in the process of turning our little annex in our garden, which we sort of use as a um, guest room and things, into a little studio, a little home studio. So I'm really hoping that when she comes to visit, which, you know, she does a lot, we will get her in and, and get her to kind of record for you guys. But anyway, I digress. So anyway, let me um, stop sort of rubbishing on and get back to the master in hand. We're going to be talking about Tasha's episode. Now, this is, this was a difficult one for yeah. me personally, because Tash is my friend and she was my friend before we became widows, and she's become a much closer friend as a result of, of the loss we've both been through. Now, I knew that um, things with her and Rob hadn't been brilliant. Rob was her husband, um, who died of esophagus cancer. Uh, but I wasn't aware of the extent of the betrayal that she'd um, experienced. And I felt quite jarred listening to it. And I was really, really proud of her for being so brave and so candid and... I guess we're getting a lot of this stuff out there that's been sitting with her for a long time. And it's been really well received. Lots of people have sent sort of messages of support. So, yeah, I just, I felt um, a great weight of responsibility with this one. Um, I do with all of them, but, you know, I, I know and, and love Tash personally. So, anyway, it was as uh, it was quite an explosive episode in that she is very angry with her late husband and with, with good reason. Um, he, um, he had PTSD, didn't he? He was, um, wh wh where did he serve in the military, John? I he, he was in the Navy. He'd done three tours of Afghanistan. That was um, it, yes. And he, he got the diagnosis of PTSD, but it sounds like they went through a bit of hell before the diagnosis and then after the diagnosis. Mm. Mm, she, uh, she said he was very angry and difficult to live with. I mean, she was, she wasn't, you know, indiscreet, but... During his cancer treatment, she was very, um, I think it's polite to say, not very well supported by his family. Um, and the fact that they were probably at a very difficult time in their relationship and maybe perhaps wouldn't have been together without these circumstances. And she continued to offer him the support and the love and the, I guess, the kind of medical nursing that, that he needed. And yeah. Even though she must have, it must have, I don't know, caring for somebody going through a cancer treatment is incredibly difficult, even when you are deeply, deeply in love with that person. To do it when your relationship is, I'm going to say tumultuous, um, that takes extra depths and extra strengths that you have to find. And then to find out afterwards that, even draw, during the time that you are caring for them, that they are leaving, leading a double life and betraying you and texting other women. And I mean, bloody hell, right? I mean, talk about absolutely kick you when you're down. I don't know. I don't know how, how she got to where she is today, if I'm honest. Um, it, you know, it's one thing to, you know, I think I, we were saying earlier when we were discussing today's show, like if that had happened, Without Ingain Ilan passing away, Tash, Tash would have still had quite a lot to deal with to get over to even contemplate a new relationship. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it's the fact that she, she got the second realised because she had no idea until he passed. And she would literally just set his PlayStation up for Marley. Um, and Marley's and, her son, by the way, if anybody hasn't heard. Yes. Um, if you haven't listened, go and listen, everybody. Um, and to... You know, to discover it, so not only has she cared for him while the relationship was challenged, but then to find the betrayal afterwards, after going out and stretching herself so far, 
Mm. Um, and, 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 yeah, the credit to her for even even getting up in the morning. Um, mm. af, after that one, because that would knock you knock you flying. Um, and yeah, this is, mm. you know, you know, it's the first time she spoke about this in such a and she, public way with you. And she is angry, and and rightfully so. She's angry because, you know. So maybe it was so intense because of the depths she had to go to in order to be there for him in his hour of need. Um, to be doing all that for somebody and then for them to be cheating on you. I mean, she even said that one a woman he worked with went to the hospital and met his parents while he was in hospital for this cancer. I mean, the mind boggles. But I, I speak from very personal experience of knowing Tash that she is incredibly tough and strong. And I really hate that she's had to be, but... I love the fact that she has somehow found this ability to fall in love again. And I, I know her new partner, Alan, and he's really lovely. He's a really nice guy. And they're blending their families and creating this new, different life. And I think you're right. We often talk about widows being able to potentially love again because you haven't got that bitterness and resentment. But in this circumstance, you do. And, and it does make it hard. And I know that you know, Lulu, for example, um, she has very complex grief surrounding her husband's death, um, episode two, for anybody that hasn't heard it. Um, and I've spent a lot of time talking to her about this, and it, it really does extend the grieving process and leave you angry and quite bitter. And I think often finding a way to make peace with them sort of retrospectively is, is valuable, but I also can see how for many people you just couldn't. Well, I know I went through Ben's phone after not looking for evidence of betrayal, but looking for numbers and letting people know. And of course, at the back of your mind, there is always that worry that, oh God, what if I find something? What if I had no clue who I was married to? Um, and I didn't, just for, for clarity. But um, to then meet people who have gone through that, which really is a sort of compounding tragedy on, on top of what you've experienced I just think they, they I don't know they have they really do have to dig that bit deeper and um I don't know I, I just I suppose I'm, I wanted to say that I think you're awesome guys because it, it, it must be really difficult yeah yeah you are every, every one of you are awesome the ones who we haven't interviewed yet and the ones who've gone out on air already because yeah, it isn't easy is it and actually if anybody has got anything they want to comment on this if they want to reach out to us or to Tash, because um, I can certainly pass on messages to her, please do so, because we really want you to kind of um, feel involved in what we're doing here. So, yeah, let us know. And, and if you've got a story like this that you felt you couldn't speak about before, you can hear, you can. It used to be that you you know, you would talk kind of privately about this sort of stuff, but do you know what, kind of, fuck it, let's, let's get this stuff out in the open, right? So just to give you a little bit, I don't know, sort of, share a little bit of what's going on in, in our world at the moment. Uh, as you're aware, we had a, a really nice trip to the Isle of Wight. It went really smoothly, actually. We had a great time. Um, the kids were brilliant. It very much felt like being abroad. So, yeah, we really enjoyed that trip. Um, and I did mention we'd seen Ben's family while we were there. One of the reasons sort of going around this time of year is that his birthday was on Monday. But Sarah, John's first wife and, and late wife, was, her birthday was on Friday. So we we have quite a lot of sort of synchronicity and dates. It, it's quite funny because um, it's also uh, Holly and John's birthday next week. Um, and you had, sorry, John, you had this kind of like a revelation or this kind of moment on the beach. And I know you don't mind me asking if you would sort of share it a little bit because I think it's quite important. Of course. The way the way I, I deal with these big days now is I, I'm I try to just wait and see what they do on the day. I don't dread them. I don't um like dwell. I'm a week away or, or whatever. And I sort of get, I've got myself to a place where I can just the day will come and it'll be where it'll be. And I thought I was you doing pre worry. I don't pre worry yet. Yeah. Mm. Um. But but that does take a lot of practice. A lot of practice. You know. Um. Coming up to five years in now, but um. Um, and I thought I was doing all right on the birthday, and then we were we were sat on the beach. I think I was sat behind you, and it, it, I looked down to Holly, and she was in the sea, and she started wearing these clips in her hair, wasn't she? These big bunch clips. Now her mum wore these clips, and she wore her hair in pretty much the same style. And from a distance, seeing her in the sea, I just got a glimpse. Um, and then my head went to this weird place, and it's like right. Um, and I was trying to remember what Sarah looked like 
uh, and trying to compare how close how close she was to Holly and and the same with Arabs and everything else. But all my head had given me was photos. Um, and they were very, and I couldn't for the for everything I was trying to do was to draw a memory, a mm. picture in my head of her. Um, and it sort of set me off on a, on a, a little mini grief um, episode. But you blissfully bliss unaware, I was just sat was behind you, behind sunglasses. Um, and, you know, it wasn't that I didn't want to tell you. I, I wanted to try. I thought, okay, well, it's here. I'm going to sit with it. I'm going to process it. I'm going to see what I can, if I could pull myself out. And if I need help, then I'd just tap me on the shoulder and ask for a cuddle. Um, but it, it was quite, it, it's probably one of the first times where I've deliberately sat with my grief and, and understood why I'm why I'm doing it and why I why I got there. So I just let it run its course. It took about fifteen, twenty minutes. Um I think a solitary tear might have rolled down out of the corner of my eye. But then I was able to bring it back around gratitude and then and I looked at Holly and like you know, she's ten next week. She's in the sea. She's a growing little girl. She's feisty, bubbly, funny, hilarious. And her mum will be so proud. And I managed to turn it around and do uh, happiness start and then the sadness sort of left and the gratitude came back and it, it, it's the first time where I can actually acknowledge that's what I did and I told you on the journey on the way home which, um, you know it wasn't because I didn't feel I could tell you at the time it was I wanted to yeah. try I wanted to try that way to, to see what happened because initially I, I sort of went oh my god why didn't you tell me and I thought oh god I was sitting there and you know I was sitting like leaning back against you and I had no clue and I thought I felt really awful that you'd been as I perceived in a form of distress and I hadn't realized but hearing you um well tell me at the time and also hearing you kind of relate it back then I realized actually what you're doing is a new sort of process of grief as you, well, you described it as such where you are able to think something that makes you go oh god oh god no I'm losing them and you know, they're slipping through my fingers sit with that thought and then kind of reframe it. And as you describe Holly like that, and and it's beautiful the way you talk about her, really beautiful, but you've also talked about Sarah in much the same. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I've never met Sarah, but from everything I know about her, from you, from other people that know her, what we are seeing in Holly is this kind of version of her, which must be really special to see. But of course, it is heartbreaking too, because wouldn't it be wonderful to tap them on the shoulder and go, look, mm -hmm. look, yeah. look, 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 look how she is. Look what I've done. Look at this wonderful creation that I've managed to to, to build. And I don't know that it, I think anything, it, yeah, it is difficult, isn't it, to manage that conflict of being so proud of everything mm -hmm. we have and everything we've achieved, but also the reflection back of what they don't get to see and, and what they don't get to be part of. And uh, let, let's be honest, this is a new feeling that, Unless you're widowed, in the you're not exposed to this feeling. Yeah. You know the the conflict, and you know they should be here. And it goes back to this need and this loss. And yeah. you know that's the early days of grief calling you back. Um, and the happy and sad thing, once you can accept that it's okay to coexist with them, that they do they do live together, um, and you stop trying to fight it all the time, you are able to ha be more grateful for what you did have. And you talk a lot about being very grateful for the time that you had with Sarah. And I'm now feeling very grateful for the time I had with Ben. And I spent some time, you know, thinking about him on, on Monday. But much like you, I used to sort of panic about grief. I'd get myself into a bit of a tears um, prior to a big day. And often the day itself wouldn't be as awful. Um, I have talked a little bit about getting quite upset on the five-year anniversary. But Ben's birthday passed without significant event, really. Um... Monty, our eldest son, has gone away on a school trip for the first time abroad. So he's currently in France, which feels incredibly strange, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, it doesn't really matter. He's the quietest one out of the bunch, but we still miss him in the house. It's weird. Yeah, it's really odd. It's just things like getting out, you know, one less plate at dinner times and stuff. It's really strange. I guess actually, I haven't really thought of it, but... I, know, I don't know if I can compare a child being away to grief, but that weird feeling you have in those only days where you lay your table and there's one place short. Mm. Um, and I felt a bit wonky this week, and I suppose that could be something to do with it. I guess the fact he's, you know, he's out of the country, um, you, it feels like he's growing up. Um, so I, I did a similar thing to you, and I sort of, well, I cried on poor Monty, but not in front of his schoolmates, you'll be relieved to hear. Um, and he's 
you know, and off you went. And uh, it's it's funny, isn't it? I you mark the day, and you I like I like it because I think it makes everybody else think about them a bit, which makes me smile yeah. really now. Yeah, me too, me too. And I yeah, I I did the post on Facebook in the end. Um, I fight with it every year, but you're but you're right. It's the acknowledgement and the reminder for everyone to like. You know, I never think about them. I think that's it. I think you sort of felt uncomfortable doing a post, and I ummed and ahed about it last year and thought, I, can't, I don't know, weird, I'm posting happy birthday to a dead person. It's, what am I doing this? What, who am I doing this for? What, what do I want from this? Do you know what I mean? You sort of question and sort of wonder why. And really, when it comes down to it, it is, it is when we post about the person that we've lost, it, as a general rule, it is, it's not necessary to broadcast our pain, although that, you know, that is a valid reason. Often it is just to make people remember and yeah. It comes down to this idea of legacy and not wanting them to be forgotten, I guess. Yeah. And even if it is just a couple of times a year that people go, oh, God, yeah, they were so cool. I like, you know, what a, what a man, what a woman. Even if it is just that, that actually that's 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 enough sometimes, isn't it? It is, yeah, it is. It's, and it's like the jeweler where he knew Ben. And they, you know, yeah. they, they often like recant stories about him. Like that, that's incredibly true then. And actually, we've got um, we're, we're doing a little barbecue at the weekend for Holly's birthday, and Sarah's family, of course, will be there. And also, um, some friends who primarily were Sarah's friends are coming, and I really like hearing about her. And for Holly to have access to somebody that knew a different side of her mum, I think again, that's that's really special. And and, and you know, we're very lucky that we have that relationship with people. But um, yeah, it, it, it's 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 so important to show. The children who their parent was, aside from just their parent, I guess, is what I'm in a very convoluted way trying to express. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. I, I, um, You're just used uh, to nodding and agreeing, aren't you? Uh, I, I, like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to Sunday because it's been a while since we've caught up with our particular friends. Yeah, um, I am as well. We missed them a few a few months ago, which we we regret, but um, hopefully we'll have a good catch up on Sunday. Now. So, just before we go, I'm going to quickly say something that I wasn't planning to say, and John has no idea I'm saying. Oh, no. And it's a little bit sloppy. So anybody yeah. that's get, it, it might get the ick, you might want to switch off now. Um, he has spent, John, you, <laughs> have spent the last um, few days planning and, and building a home office, as I mentioned at the beginning of the episode. Now, this man has been invested in what I'm doing here, or we're now doing here from the very beginning. And he has supported and helped me create this podcast. He laboriously edits and produces and helps me with scheduling, booking, and all the kind of stuff that my brain really struggles with. And now he's built me a studio. And the level of belief that you must have in me in order to do this goes above and beyond sort of supportive husband role. And it's given me the self-belief in myself to do this. So I just want to publicly thank you for believing in me um, as we now venture onto this incredible journey together. Oh. And now I'm going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that, that, myself, no, no, that's very kind of well, but I, I, uh, yes, of course, I believe in you, but I see the passion that you bring to this and what you want from this. Like, it's a two way I feed off you and you feed off me. And I, <laughs> come on, it's a family show. That wasn't even what I said. Um, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And it's not a family show. Don't oh, well, no, it's, it's not a family show. We wouldn't <laughs> want these stories for children. Um, but but um, you're incredibly passionate about bringing these stories out and changing this narrative, and you know, saying that hi, we're widowed, we're over here. I have a set of skills because of my past. Um, you have a set of skills, and we just work together, and we we complement each other and do the bits we need to do. Um, Teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. maybe we're going to call the episode this. But um, maybe I'm going to draw a line on this episode because it's now becoming a shambles. <laughs> Not a shambles. Not a shambles. Um, thank you ever so much for listening. As always, you lovely bunch of people, please take care of yourselves. Um, Monday's episode is going to be about a suicide. As always, every episode is emotive. As always, these come with an extra little kind of um, caution i guess because they 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 are very difficult to listen to so just approach with care and look after yourselves lots of love goodbye everybody 